Hello, I'm James Brady, producer of Southland Adventures, and welcome to our new show. Each week we'll be visiting a special and unique location somewhere in the south. The main focus of our shows will be history and nature. We're proud to produce a show the whole family can enjoy without offensive content. We're excited to open our first show here on the deck of the aircraft carrier known as the Fight Flight, the USS Yorktown at Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum on the beautiful Charleston Harbor in South Carolina. The Yorktown is rich in history and has plenty of interesting displays for all ages. In a few minutes, we'll show you the many aircraft on display here at Patriots Point, including the L-14 Tomcat, the LFA-18 Hornet, and many others, plus the Apollo 8 Space Capsule. First, let's go visit the experts at Patriots Point. My name is Hugh Tant, and I'm the executive director at Patriots Point, and I have with me Charlie Hall, who's over on public relations here at Patriots Point. And I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what Patriots Point is all about. Well, it's located in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, on the beautiful Cooper River, right at the foot of the brand new bridges that we have connecting Charleston with Mount Pleasant. It's a wonderful place to come and have fun and to learn and to uh, express the freedoms that we have, experience the freedoms that we have that have been provided through the sacrifices of our men and women, of our armed services from the past, the present, and the future. And here at Patriots Point, uh, at our centerpiece, is the USS Yorktown, the Fighting Lady. It was commissioned in 1943 and uh, she replaced this, the former Yorktown aircraft carrier, the CV-5, that was sunk at the Battle of Midway in 1942. But this aircraft carrier, the CV-10, has an extraordinary military record. She earned 11 battle stars while she was commissioned. Jeez. And, um, and she participated in, in many major engagements during World War II and all the way up through Vietnam. And she was decommissioned in 1970 and then she came to Charleston in 1975 as the first museum ship here establishing the Naval Museum and, and Maritime Museum here at Patriots Point. We also have three other ships here. We have a submarine, the USS Clamagore, and she was commissioned in 1945, and, and people just love to go on board her as well. We also have a, uh, our oldest ship is the, is the Coast Guard Cutter, the Ingham, and she was commissioned in 1936. And the Ingham uh, is unique in that she sunk a German submarine out in the Atlantic during World War II. And then we have another very famous ship, which is a destroyer, and that is the USS Laffey, L-A-F-F-E-Y, Laffey. And um, she participated in the D-Day invasion on the 6th of June, 1944, at Normandy, France. And then she um, steamed on to the Pacific Ocean and she was on patrol on the 16th of April, 1945, north of Okinawa and close to Japan when she was attacked by 50 Japanese aircraft. 50? 50. 50 of them. On one ship? On one ship. At one time, six of those aircraft during the course of the fight impacted directly on the Laffey, the suicide type bombers, and also Four hundred five, four five hundred pound bombs impacted on the Laffey. It was incredible. Under normal circumstances, she would have sunk. Now she shot nine of the Japanese invaders out of the sky, and with the help of the Wildcats and the Corsairs from other um, air, um, from the uh, supporting aircraft carriers in the area. They were able to fight off the Japanese and, and win the day. Gosh. Uh, win the day to fight another day. But, as I mentioned, she would have normally been sunk with that much impact mm. on her. And she did not sink, obviously. And she became known as the 
is a ship that would never die. She has an unbelievable history, and when when sailors come on board to volunteer to help her, paint her, clean her up, do different kind of repair work, scrape the rust off, get things fixed up for the public to come and enjoy. You talk to them for a few minutes and you hmm. see tears in the eyes. It's, it's a very emotional thing. It's a wonderful thing to come here and experience the sacrifices for freedom. It's wonderful. Now, we yeah. also go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's, that's one of the things to talk about the people that come here. Yeah. We have a hundred volunteers who volunteer their time just to come here, talk to visitors. Some of them are the same people that actually that's served right. on the Yorktown. They'll, right. they'll say, well, you know, I remember sitting over there on that, on that gun mount over there. And, uh, you know, they'll tell you their stories. Right. It just brings history back to life. Exactly. And it, it really gives you the chill bumps to see all that. Right. And, and this year uh, we celebrated the, the first anniversary of our National Medal of Honor Museum on board the Yorktown. We have a wonderful facility that tells the stories of our nation's greatest heroes, those who earned the Medal of Honor. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and they are from the Army, Navy, Marines, and the Coast Guard. There's one woman who's received the, the Medal of Honor too. And, um, and those stories are incredible. Uh, the average age of the living recipients is about 75 years old right yes. now. Um, there are only 101 living as of this day, the 28th of August. And um, the oldest is 99 years old, and his name is John Finn, and he embodies the American spirit. And if I could for a minute, I'd like to talk about, about his story there at Pearl Harbor. And he procured a 50 caliber machine gun with ammunition and he mounted it on a training mount, totally exposed. There was no armor plating or anything to protect him. He started engaging those enemy aircraft and he fired away and he knocked one of them out of the sky and they returned fire. And they hit John Finn 21 times, knocking him down, and he'd get back up and start fighting again. Good gosh. And so that's been the story of his life. Gosh. He'd get knocked back, get knocked down, and he'd get right back up. Mm. Mm. And that's what the lesson we can learn from John Finn. Yeah. And there are many, many stories like that that people can learn in our National Medal of Honor Museum. Oh, General, I go through that Medal of Honor Museum at least once a day. And every time I go in there, I, I get goosebumps, and this is for real. And I, even when I escort people in there, I say, you know, you're going to go in with goosebumps when you come out, you'll have tears in your eyes. And I do every time I walk through there. It's, it's so emotional because it's so interactive, and you actually hear the real stories of what happened to these men, you know, what situations they were in. They're all were just normal people caught in unusual circumstances who acted heroically. And that's what's so beautiful about that Medal of Honor Museum and the feelings in there. Right. Great place. And so it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to come and enjoy and to learn those sacrifices of the past. It's absolutely wonderful. And uh, we would encourage anyone to come and, and see these things.